Last time on the Pink Bike Academy presented by Shimano, we pushed the riders to their limits with back-to-back -back fitness challenges. 15 seconds. Unfortunately for Misha, it wasn't her day and the Academy lost another rider. Seven riders remain and they're all hungry for that top spot. This time, the contestants will face a rude awakening before competing in a series of challenges that replicate the real-life pressures of racing professionally. Jet lag, recovery, and navigating unfamiliar terrain are all part of the job. We push the pedal to the floor. In this game, we always ready for more. Oh, you try to push me to my limit, but they yes, know that I've been here before. <laughs> My wake up call was a little rough. I couldn't really figure out what was going on. Things were really loud. I thought there was an alarm. Last night they told us, ah, wake up call's gonna be at 9.30. You get to sleep in today. That didn't happen so much. What's going on, boys? Five minutes! Five you minutes. got five minutes! Come on, Joe, put a little hustle in! I did find the wake up call quite stressful. I was like, no, <laughs> when and I realized that we actually had to get ready. Change plan! Everyone ready? Hello. Five minutes! Five minutes downstairs! You're riding right here! Uh, yeah, when I was a kid, my dad was waking me up uh, with a cold water splashing my face. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I don't know, I just uh, hear it and get ready pretty quick. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I bet you're wondering why we're all up at 5 a.m. <laughs> yes, tell us why! <laughs> Today's challenge is all about replicating the pressures that come with racing professionally. Unfortunately, the race starts at the top of the mountain and it's a little early to take the chairlift. But luckily, there's a nice trail you can pedal up. It'll take you all the way there and we'll start the race up at Rhonda Lake. Everyone ready to race? Yeah. 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 Three, two, one. Go. Faster, faster, come on, race is starting, race is starting! Come on! I'm gonna try to get my helmet on. Sun's coming up, guys, come on, let's go! I've seen cattle move faster, come on! On the hike up to the lake, uh, I kind of took the lead and then just tried to keep the group together on the way up. It was good to just nice get a nice spin in the legs and get things moving again. Maybe they'll have coffee up there. Yeah. Kettle, yeah. and then a coffee? Yeah! yeah. The lack of sleep is definitely noticeable. I feel like I have really good short bursts of energy because I notice as soon as I'm done anything, I'm like in like a wave of hunger and tiredness. They're popping. So beautiful. I actually really enjoy going for my dawn patrol rides. You get to like watch the world wake up. I'm usually more like a nightlife person. So it was very interesting to have experience, you know, wake up before the sun. I wasn't struggling as much. I feel like my body already adapting to uh, this kind of uh, working out. So it was really nice. I really enjoyed the uh, climb up to the lake. Oh, my coffee's getting cold. Guys, hurry up! My coffee's getting cold. Come on! We've been here for hours. Get up there. Julia! I gather Julie is probably not a morning person. Yeah, the lack of sleep definitely made me a bit more exhausted, like climbing up to the lake. So I think I was a bit fatigued, but it's definitely a wake up call. Contestants, welcome to Rhonda Lake. As you all know, recovery is a big part of riding and training. And what better way to recover than an ice bath? Who's excited? Woo! Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Florida boy doesn't do ice. I actually kind of faked it a little bit. I wasn't too much worried about the ice bath challenge, but I wanted to give everybody else a little bit of a reaction. Being Florida boy, everybody sort of assumed that, oh, is he gonna be able to take that? So it was kind of cool to have that in my back pocket. Vlad, you stoked? Nah, well, it's okay, <laughs> but I also know the fan of cold water. I'm 
don't like cold water, I definitely more like a, you know, either hot tub or warm ocean. <laughs> For the next part of the challenge, you will need to spend at least 30 seconds submerged in the lake before getting back on your bike and starting the final part of the challenge. You guys ready for a dip? Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. Go! Get in! Come on, recovery! Recovery! When they yelled go, I just went straight into the water. There's no point in overthinking it. And I know the technique is to wear socks going into the cold water so your feet don't get that initial shock going in. Remember, we want people that are motivated. It's a pro deal. Andy's get in! <laughs> We said shoulders, we said shoulders. Oh, did anyone start the timer? In Squamish, we definitely have a lot of cold water rivers. So sometimes we wake up really in the morning and go for a cold swim. So it's definitely one of my favorite things. I've grown up swimming, so I really just like playing in the water. We've got good, strong mental strength happening right now. <laughs> We're at almost two Look minutes at right now. This is, good. this is good, we said 30 seconds. Vlad, I haven't heard you for a while. Yeah, the first five seconds uh, definitely was cold, but uh, because of the adrenaline of the challenge, it actually was way easier if I would just do it on my own. All right, since nobody's phased, let's up the ante a bit. First one over to the rock gets the prize. Glad a swimmer. That was so it's not even fair. Yeah, Glad's a pro swimmer. He doesn't sink like a rock with all those lats on lats. I used to be a professional swimmer. I stopped at 12, so not really professional, but like junior professional kind of thing. So uh, it was nice. Could finally use my swimming skills. Vlad gets the prize. Oh, all right. Vlad. Yeah, Vlad. Vlad, we can't see your muscle from here. Good job, brother. Vlad. Come get your bonus. Here he is. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Shotgun! <laughs> All right, how's everyone feeling? Warm enough? Yeah! Woo. With the help of trail forks, we've loaded a waypoint onto your Garmin somewhere in the Big White Bike Park. You must get to that waypoint, collect the trail forks water bottle located inside of a fox bag, and bring it back to the Pink Bike Academy as quickly as possible. We're judging you on the ability to use the Trail Forks app and the Garmin, and also how quickly you get back to the Academy. And we really want people to sing for themselves. There are multiple routes to the waypoints. Some are longer, but easier, and some are shorter, but tougher. Good luck, and I'll see you back at the Academy. Three, two, one, go. I'm going this way. Hey, mate. Hey, buddy. I went the hardest way, like the most physical way possible. So, like, I was like an XC race again. I looked on the Garmin, I knew it was on rocket science. So I was just like, I knew exactly where that trail was. So I just, I was like, I'm gonna get to the chair and then get as fast as I can to rocket science. We're only about 10 minutes into the competition right now. Ben is the only competitor that chose to hike up the trail with his bike to get to the top of the chairlift the quickest, whether or not that actually works, we'll see. Everybody else just sped off on the road down there. So chances are they're gonna have to go to the very bottom of the chairlift and then upload. I decided to really strategize on this one. So I just decided that I had to um, use my map reading skills and the Garmin 530, um, the first thing I did was just making sure that I was facing the right direction towards the waypoint, um, which is super awesome with the little arrow. As soon as you turn, it turns with you. And then I just sort of bushwhacked um, up to the quickest trail and then um, got on of the Habba Bubba Trail and then just quickly hiked, biked up to the peak and then just went from there. So it was a very, very fast route. Me and Vlad were going for the same one. I saw the trail on the right and Vlad jammed the brakes to go for it, but I was like, we'd already been riding down for like a minute at that point. 
in a minute going down a fire road leaves you some good elevation yeah. so I just kept going. Hello. Hello. Okay. So as long as there's no technical malfunctions with the chairlift, we should be doing pretty good. But I don't think the chairlift was a bad idea. That was definitely my backup plan. Um, but as soon as I saw it, every single person turned left down the road. I was like, at least my route will be more interesting. Yeah, for the scavenger hunt, I decided to kind of just like make traverse across the mountain. Should I take them down? Gotta make do. And turns out it wasn't maybe the best suggestion for me, um, just because I'm not the best at hike biking. We can't always just rely on like brute strength all the time. Women have to like figure out a way to be just as good at the sport, but figure an alternative method to do it. Like, will they use our, our brains a lot? When you find yourself walking, crossing the mountain under the chairlift, don't think it's a good sign. I should be right on top of it. I actually think people are starting to be a little unassuming of me. I've been kind of flying in the, the middle of the pack the entire time. Oh no. And I'm just gonna continue to do that and see how far it takes me because that's just who I am. I should be right on top of it. Initially, I was going to hike up to the chairlift, changed my mind. I went back down and traversed down the road to the same elevation as the waypoint and then just hoofed my bike across as fast as I could underneath the chairlift. Another easy win today, you know, went out there. I just thought, um, you know, everyone else is doing the easy route. Might as well take the challenging route and clean up, you know? So, yeah, I just went for it. Uh, yeah, I didn't even see anyone else. I think they're probably about, like, two hours behind, so. Done. <sighs> Dude, we were barely even ready for you, huh? <laughs> oh, man. Where did, you, where did you go? What was your strategy? I went up the steep hill. Punched up the steep yeah, hill? Yeah, I, I went for the all-in. You know, I just put zero effort in, and uh, I still win, so. Maybe one day you'll learn how to put on a challenge. <sighs> All right, production team, can we uh, reassess the future challenges and like ramp up the difficulty specifically for Douche Ben here? Thank you. Um, I definitely feel proud of myself for today. I think that um, I, I definitely, I have unique skills. I'm really trying to um, hone in on like all the things that I'm really good at. I'm not the fastest peddler, so I had to be the most strategic. Yeah, man. Yes. That sweat, sweat on it. Ooh. Yes. Oh. <sighs> 
I knew I was lacking behind. I sprinted to what I thought was the finish line as hard as I could and gave every last little bit I had. Addison, you okay? Yeah. You're not at the finish line yet. What? You gotta give the bottle to me. Well, we passed the start line. <laughs> Jeez. Oh. There you go. Whoa. I was slightly disappointed because obviously I wanted to win that. This was a big day. Hopefully we'll get another chance tomorrow. Vlad is way off. I saw him going down when I was going up on like some of the flow trails. Here we go. Oh my god, it was taking forever. Yeah, today's performance, it definitely was not my best. Ah. Yeah, I kind of chose a bad choice of how I was going to navigate. I decided to just bushwhack all the way across the mountain, which with short legs is not the best plan. Trail forks bottle in hand. Yeah, Angie. Yeah. You are a savage for how you did that. <laughs> you just bushwhacked straight across. Left. Just straight across. That's gnarly. Oh. I felt like mine was a safe choice. It seemed to work. I feel like I was able to get it done quite quickly. Yeah. Trail Forks bottle. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, I had just a little problem with a Garmin, which I should have fixed. So I went a little bit around, but I think the strategy was great. Like it was like for me, but it didn't turn out as well, but it is what it is. Let's cheer on. Yeah. Finish it, finish it! Yeah. Hell yeah. Definitely my biggest mistake was my strategy. I thought the chair might be too slow because it takes about like 10, 15 minutes to get up it. That's why I just said, decide to just go straight across the mountain. You guys obviously all had very different strategies, but it was cool to see you all took different routes there. I think some paid off and some maybe didn't, but don't forget, we're taking the whole day into account when judging your performance for this challenge. So give us some time. The judges need to crunch some numbers. We'll come back to you with some results. All right, early morning today. <laughs> Earlier than I've had in a long time. I gotta say, it was quite the treat. I was standing right outside the buildings when you woke those contestants up. You are savages. Well, it was the point, uh, and uh, I mean, those guys were up uh, quite fast for the boys, so I wish I could go a bit harder, but they are on it. So Christina, how are the girls this morning? Uh, they were definitely a little slower than I anticipated. Come on, Joe, put a little I didn't really get the reaction that I wanted, you know, if, if that was me and I was vying for this opportunity of a lifetime, I'd be up in my skippies, ready to go, at attention. There's really no excuse on their part. So we challenged them with a climb up the mountain, a little bit cruel for sure, that early in the morning. But then that ended at a lake and we did kind of like an ice bath challenge. So who embraced it? I mean, we can safely say that Drew embraced it. First one, keen to get into the water, it's quite impressive. Now getting to the final part of today's challenge, the, the scavenger hunt. And it was interesting to see everyone just spread out like little ants all over this mountain. Who had the best strategy, Fab? Uh, Joe again, because yeah. she beat like guys like Evan or Edison that are machines. I mean, she took like a route straight up the hill yeah, she was like really confident. Um, also, I mean, Ben, you, you're gonna give credit to him because he's, even if he's super fit, he'll like use the fastest route for his skills and smashed it. And even, even, even he like took the chairlift and uh, only guys to like have uh, really the commitment to go down, to go back up. Yeah, Joe, Ben and uh, Evan clearly like shine today, I think. What about the bottom riders, who are they? I would say, Vlad, Angie, and Julia were kind of all holding up the back. Um, for me, with Angie, like it's kind of hard to get a rise out of her. You want to be always giving any positive energy and really like driving the people. Vlad, 
again in the bottom. For Vlad, somehow the attitude is uh, giving him this e extra uh, bonus point that make him s slide through. And then finally, Julia. I think Julia just uh, stand out as been having a bit of a hard time from the water to the time. Yeah, again, the pep in the step, it just wasn't there. All right, sounds like we have our bottom three riders then, and sounds like you've also made a decision. Guess I gotta go let them know. Mm-hmm. All right. Ooh. I don't know about you guys, but I am exhausted. <laughs> I would say sorry, but today's challenges were designed to replicate the real life pressures that professional racers go through. And I think they did just that. That being said, Addison, please take a step forward. I've heard you mention multiple times in earlier challenges that you were saving yourself for future challenges. At the finish line today, you basically collapsed. Was today 110% for you? Yeah. I made a mistake and decided to pedal all the way up. And in that, I knew I was losing a lot of time, so I really had to empty the tank to the top. I think that's a good reminder for all of you. Every day there's an elimination, and to give 110% every day, because the judges are always watching, they're always talking. Addison, let me take a step back. Joe, can you please take a step forward? This morning, you were more awake than me. You did a synchronized swimming routine in the lake, and you went full beast mode during the scavenger hunt. Today was your day. Congratulations. Thank you. You may now take a step back. Angie, Julia, Vlad, please take a step forward. Angie. Your route during the scavenger hunt was a little questionable. <laughs> <laughs> I like the pain. But the judges admired your grit and determination to get it done. And for that reason, you're safe. You may now take a step back. Oh yeah. Vlad, on the bottom again today. How was the challenge for you? It was fun. I decided to pick a the shortest line, straight line, and the strategy was good, but I did a mistake. Oh my god, it was taking forever. So it didn't go as planned. Julia, the judges felt your attitude wasn't there today, and you found yourself lost on a ski run. How did it go for you today? Um, I was definitely a bit out of my element. Going up to the lake, I was trying to conserve some energy, so I was a bit far back, and I tried to persevere, and. Uh, choose the shortest route may not have been the best strategy for me, but I was able to get it done and really try to push through the pain and yeah. The rider going home today is Julia. Your time at the Pink Bike Academy has come to an end. Like I went full gas yesterday and I think I did pretty well in the challenge and probably was a bit fatigued from that. With Enduro, you have to make sure you get through the day or else you're not gonna win the race if you can't finish it. So that was kind of my concept for today, but I guess it didn't work. Didn't expect that. That sucks. Literally came down to just being like- Like the attitude. Just numbers. being stoked, yeah. Cause Julia's been pretty, pretty good most days. It can go like- That's yeah, crazy. One, one bad, I mean, can't let your guard down. It was definitely an ex extraordinary experience. I'm so glad to be a part of it. Um, I definitely wish I lasted longer, but. You want a warm seat, Julia? Come on in. You're coming between the brothers. <laughs> <laughs> You're a part of us now. Brother, brother sandwich. <laughs> so many other opportunities for you. I will never forget your face when you pedaled past me on the XC race. You were like <laughs> so deep in the pain cave. Yeah. yeah, definitely gave like 150% yesterday. I've never but. seen your face red before. That wraps up one of the toughest competitions yet. We saw all the riders struggle, but it was Julia who cracked under the pressure. Only six riders remain, and there's still plenty of competition left. Catch all the action next time on the Pink Bike Academy, presented by Shimano. Next time. Pop the trunk, Vlad. Okay.
it on the gas. It's all about teamwork and following the rules as the competitors face a multi-stage challenge. Even those little mistakes can cost you. This elimination is important. Grind, grind, come on. I feel like a lot of this week has been tasting blood in my mouth. You all made mistakes. So we have to reach that together. And the stakes are higher than ever. Today is a team elimination. Like, I really don't want him to lose because of me. Finish it! Ugh, I'm gonna puke. Catch it all next time on the Pink Bike Academy, presented by Shimano.